Good morning, my YouTube family. It is your boy Zary from the XMG coming at you on a very early Tuesday morning. I have my coffee. Hopefully, you have some too if you're watching this in the morning. And first thing I gotta do is I gotta apologize for yesterday. Man, I feel like an idiot about the whole Renara thing. I didn't even look, didn't think to look. I just saw it and I was like, oh man, that means she's coming. So, a couple of viewers. David and Wally pointed it out to me. So, yeah, I'm glad they did because, whew, yeah, I was focused on Battlegrounds and all that. But anyways, we are here this morning to talk to you about artifacts and the free artifact pack that you get, you know, by simply loading the game after the patch. And I've been asked a couple of times, I don't know what to do with the artifacts, who are they good for? And we're going to try to break it down the best way we can. Now, obviously, everything's going to be a little bit different based on your roster and who you have but we can just talk about ideas and suggestions and things like that so let's get into the artifact bundle and check out what we got all right so i made myself smaller and i just jumped into more doom now just simply so we could review the artifacts and kind of see what we have and what we're working with here so if you look at them the first one we all received, the only blue one, is up. applying a debuff increases potency for 1%. 2% for Venomate, 3 times per battle. We get plus 24 to attack, and then we get, or to damage, I'm sorry, and plus 15% to shield. Now, there's definitely some takeaways from artifacts as a whole that you need to understand. And this is at max level, all right? So the stats I just let, led you as at max level. Now, to start, we only have 24 damage and 1.2% shield. Now, at max level, we increase potency by 2.5% and 5% for Venomate. And right now, it's 1 and 2. Right here, this, this rune benefits Venomate down here. But it doesn't have to be used for Venomate. If you are not using Venomate, don't put it on there. You know, that is one of the questions I get is, do I have to put this on Venomate? Should I put it on Venomate or whatever the character is for that rune or artifact that people are sending me? And if you're not using Venomate, this can definitely help anybody who you're using who doesn't have a high potency. So when you're looking at something like this, you when you really want somebody with high potency, an extra 1% to start is pretty good. So, who can we put this on? Like, for me, if we go back to our character screen here, and we go to our demons, I have Venomate Gear 11. Now, we take a look at his stats here, and we want to look at potency. He has 63% potency. So, is that 1% potency on Venomate going to make all the difference in the world? Probably not. So who's, who's other characters we need with potency? And that that we use quite a bit. So let's take a look at our gear 11s. Like Mordoom needs potency. Tromgar needs potency. You know, so his potency is at 67%. So still about as high as Venomate. Freeze Art has potency. Slinger needs potency for his uh, cannonball move so we take a look at that he has 71 percent so right now venomate seems to be kind of the winner general murdoch needs potency major shot needs potency so if we take a look at major shot his potency is at 52 percent so an extra one percent there wouldn't be bad because he's the lowest of the of the group Murdoch, 50%. So maybe that's a good one for Murdoch, and it does gives you extra damage, which he, he needs. So that could be a good possible artifact on my squad for a General Murdoch. So that's something to keep in mind. So And you got to think, too, if you put it on somebody, just because it's on that person doesn't mean it needs to stay on that person. Because they can be moved around. So we're just going to put it on him for now. Then the next one up. Applying a buff to an ally has 50% chance to restore 
2% of maximum health, 4% for Patriarch Chi. So Patriarch Chi does apply buffs. That's big. Now, the other person that comes to my mind, and right now, it's 24 to damage and 1.2% to health. You know, max level, 5% maximum health, 10% to Patriarch Chi, 15% health, and that really plays into Patriarch Chi's move kit if he's under a Kin Lee lead. The other person who comes to mind right off the bat that this might not be bad for would be Solius. Solius applies a lot of buffs. You know, on his, on his Amos' blessing there, he puts out a lot of buffs. So that is something to keep in mind. And now, also any kind of tank defender, this would be good for. But for my squad, since I do have Patriarch Chi, I'm going to actually put this on Patriarch Chi because I have him gear 11. And I use my pandas under a Kin Lee lead rather than a Patriarch Chi lead at this point. So we go back to our Patriarch Chi. And we're going to put on this artifact here we're going to equip that to him and what it did is it brought up his power 723 brought up his physical damage 26 magic damage 26 and health 335 right now so not a bad place to start we have a dodge dodging an attack has a 50 percent chance to increase damage by one eight point or 0 0.8 percent and 1.6 percent for here hera once per battle now the next one up here is accuracy 10 percent and armor and then it ends up increasing hera's damage by four percent i also have hera at gear 11 and i will probably use this for her but this rune could be used for like a foul this would be really good for foul because she puts up those dodge increases and that would that would help out 50% chance to increase your damage and she is a damage dealer and then so anybody you pair if you're using foul with your panda team So maybe this would be a good for ember because you know things like that You got to think of who it would be good for and how it would benefit them And again, this doesn't make a difference well, on this one I am gonna put it on Hera because I am working on my pride. I do use the Hera and Salvador combination So that will help out a little bit. So we're gonna jump over to Hera and we are going to equip that to her. So the next one on the list is landing a critical hit increases crit damage by 0.8% three times a battle and 1.8 or 1.6 for Ember. So we have the damage and then we have looks like tenacity. Yeah. And this ends up being 4% for Ember. So not a bad place to start, but this is really good for any sort of damage dealer. Now a couple that come off to my head that's reliant on critical chance is a, a slinger you need you need to, to stack that critical chance with a slinger to increase his critical damage um a lake would be good for something like that also you have instructor goram who's very reliant and works into his kit for critical hits so that one could be used for there if i had my goblins higher i would probably consider putting it on instructor goram but since i'm using my pandas more and it is made for ember I am going to, to put this artifact onto Ember at this time. The next one up is when max health drops below 50%, you have a 10% chance to receive cheat death for one turn, two turns for major shot once per battle. So major shot's a pretty squishy character. And you also want this for squishy characters. It looks like you get armor and it looks like you get some damage increase. But I'm not going to put this one on major shot since my goblins really aren't up and running. The person I am going to put this one on, Slinger at the moment. And the reason I'm going to put this on Slinger is when my demon comp, I don't have a defender. He gets targeted quite often and quickly. And this could give him a chance to kind of stay in the battle a little bit longer. So I'm going to put that artifact onto Slinger for now until maybe we find a better one down the line. Next one up is at the start of a battle, gains 20% penetration, 40 for Mar. Now, uh, this one, you, you definitely want it on a damage dealer. We have damage and then we have armor. So it increases survivability and increases damage. And, you know, it's just a one one star, so it's, it's going to be replaced at some point. But I don't want to recycle any of these into my other ones yet until I get more. I mean, this, the base... It, 
18 damage and some armor is going to help somebody out. And, you know, if I had Rin the Unseen up and ready to go, I would consider putting this on her. She, she does need that penetration, especially if you're using, like, a lake lead. That would be really good. But for now, I am going to put it on Mar because my god or my orcs are more run than Rin the Unseen. So we are going to put that one onto Mar. Next one up is dealing damage to one enemy only increases tenacity by 0.2%, 0.4% for hard arc three times a battle. We don't have I don't, well, I don't have Hard Arc up and running to a spot where I could use him religiously. So for this rune, or artifact, I keep doing that, I'm going to put it on Tromgar. Increasing Tromgar's tenacity would be really, really big, and it's going to help out more than putting it on Hard Arc. I use Tromgar way, way more, you know, and adding potency for his stuns and then overall health is really good for Tromgar, so that's kind of where I'm going to put it, but... Other characters where this, you know, any defender, Kin Lee, would be really good for. Although he doesn't really need the potency. Little Batty, this would be exceptional for. Because she does need that potency. But for my team, the best benefit right now is putting it on Tromgar. The next one up is suffering a critical hit increases damage by 0.02% and 0.04% for Zira twice per battle so uh we as we all know if you watched my video yesterday i don't have zero anywhere ready to go and we are looking at lifesteal and damage so suffering a critical hit increases damage by one percent so you want you want this again on somebody who who's going to get targeted often and isn't like you know like a defender or somebody with very low health so for my team, as of right now, some options we have is you could put it onto Solius. Solius gets targeted, especially if you're running him with a mage combination without little patty. He would get targeted and he would receive critical hits. A Nightiel would be good. Wonder Lua would be good. Cruel would be okay. Um, Freezard would not be bad either. You know, Slinger again would be good. And I think for my squad, I'm going to put it on Solius for the moment. I do run Solius quite a bit, and that would be pretty good to increase his damage, give him a little more damage, and give him some life steal to try to keep him alive a little bit longer. The next one up is the Emperor's Crown. Full shield loss has a 10% chance to get armor. Increase for one turn, 20% chance for Darien once per battle. Now, I don't use Darien. What you gotta think with this one is, you lose your shield, at 10% chance to get armor increase. So you want to want to put it on somebody who's going to be able to regen their shield or have somebody with them that could regen this, their shield to try to proc this more often. And it's going to increase critical chance and it's going to increase health. And there's one character that pops out in my mind and that's Kin Lee. This, this artifact would be pretty good for Kin Lee because he does have, it's guaranteed to be a critical hit if they're full health, increasing his damage. So the critical chance does kind of work into it, but he's going to be paired in my squad with Patriarch Chi. So that is going to be very beneficial for what I'm working with right now. So I'm just going to put that on to Patriarch Chi or to Kin Lee. And the other good thing about that is his health. He's based off his max health and the more health you can put on him the better and it is a percentage of health so as we increase it it's going to be pretty good next one up dealing damage is a two percent chance to remove a random buff from a target four percent chance for cruel once per turn so this could be very good on now there's no limit to how many times this could happen so this would be very good yes cruel is there but she doesn't really have like an aoe she's very single target damage she's kind of slower so this would be a good one looking at it would be a good one for somebody who's AOE damage, like a major shot. This would be good for. This would be good for an Ember, a Freezard, you know, characters like that Slinger, who's doing a lot of the AOE damage. Puncher Face has a good AOE move, you know, with a relatively low cooldown. So that that's kind of what I'm thinking. And this one gives you critical damage and armor and their percentage again we're kind of reliant on somebody who uh, who wants to stack critical chance this could be good for a mar who has the you know his aoe there that's reliant on critical hits so we're increasing his critical damage for me 
at this point I believe I'm going to put it onto Freezard so he does have an AoE, two AoEs in his move kit and I use him quite often so for now I'm going to put this artifact onto Freezard. And then the final one at the start of the turn gains 0.5% lifesteal and 1% for Shadar twice per battle and we're looking at potency and health so for this one you want this one can really go anywhere i don't have shadar up and running i am four four away from shadar getting him to seven stars but i do not have him up and running so for this one you really anybody with life steal you want him to attack off and, and twice per battle and it's a very you know, gains, it gains a very minimal life steal. So you kind of want somebody who's kind of squishier that you use quite a bit. So for this one, I, I, I think I am going to put it on to more doom just for now. Life steal to more doom is pretty good. He can, he can keep up his health. Sometimes he's targeted, you know, but the extra potency with a little bit of survivability on him would be pretty good. So I am just going to put that on to, on to more doom for now. I'm not a really big fan of this one. So that is how I did my breakdown for them. Now remember, a couple things about artifacts is just because it has the character listed on there does not mean they have to be used for that character. The other thing you have to remember is when you're making these decisions, they're not set in stone. You're not making a decision that is like, if you've got to take it off the character, it's going to be destroyed and you're never going to have it again. These are interchangeable. So you want to build up your teams that you use first with your artifacts. And then you want to make sure that those stats benefit your character. And then what it's doing is just kind of like an added bonus, but that can play into how you do it. So that's how I how I think about my artifacts and how I do them. And before we go, we were given five artifact chest keys. And I am going to open those up and let's see what we get. First one here. The Golden Comb, landing a critical hit, has a 50% chance, 100% chance for Nightiel to apply armor decrease for one turn to an enemy three times per battle, once per turn. So that actually, you know, you get some accuracy, you get some armor. That would not be bad for Nightiel at all. So that's that's a possibility for Nightiel. You know, other characters where you'd want to look for that is, you know, an Instructor Goram, a Mar. You know, people like that very de heavily dependent on critical hit. But Nightiel goes a lot because she will be, especially when she's paired with Solius, because she assists when a Solius attacks, so she is going more frequently. So that wouldn't be a bad one for Nightiel. Next one up, we got a gray worn sculpture of Bay Yi. Dodge, dodging an attack increases damage by 1%, 2% for Kin Lee twice per battle. The critical chance in health, now this, you know, you could use it for Kin Lee, but any defender, a little baddie would not be bad because, you know, she can, she goes quite often, especially when she's attacked, she has the counter chance. And, you know, this was really made for a defender. So I would probably stick this one closer to a defender, but still not the best another gray lucky clover damaging two or more enemies has a 50 percent chance to increase critical damage by 2.5 percent five percent for general murdoch twice per battle now this would be good for general murdoch for sure and i could see this being good for a major shot since he has two built-in aoe's this could be good for a freezard this could be good for mar this any kind of multiple damage dealer slinger puncher face even venomate you know with the potency and tenacity on there could be very good for venomate um but definitely not a bad choice for major for general murdoch or major shot second to last chest can we not get a gray Ooh, we got a green so we got gem of riches Applying buffs to allies has a 50% chance to restore 5% maximum health, 10% for Patriarch Chi, damage and health. We, we believe we kind of touched on this one already. Kind of the same process as the one we put on to Patriarch Chi. 
but you, you want this to be put onto a, a buff dealer. Um, this would, this could be good for Rin the Unseen, who's constantly buffing herself, and then under the Patriarch, or under the Kin Lee lead, maximum health would be fantastic. Any sort of defender, because you're going to be applying your taunt, and it would give you a 50% chance to restore your maximum health, so that would be really good for a defender. Again, anybody who is dealing buffs a foul, this would be really good for, because she's giving out all those dodge increases and you know is a very squishy character and then under a kin lee run team this would benefit her quite a bit and my another green all right flute of truth dealing damage to two or more enemies has a 25 percent chance to apply burning for one turn 50 percent chance for amara five times per battle damage and tenacity now when you see this one you you know obviously you read burning and you think of amara but you can think of ember would not be a bad one for Ember, giving you a damage increase and applying burn increases her overall damage. So, and you have the AoE, so this would not be bad at all. So definitely, it has to be on an AoE dealer because dealing damage to two enemies. So you need somebody who's going to attack multiple enemies at once. This We're going to put this on Ember and we already have one on her, so I'm going to show you kind of what what will happen. So here we are at Ember, and right now currently have an artifact that landing a critical hit increases crit damage by eight percent and this one is made for ember so the other one here is that flute of truth so we put the flute of say we wanted to put the flute of truth on we change it there's a zero cost to it and here we are it's there and then the one we took off is right back in our inventory so you don't need to worry about the consequences of putting it on the wrong character if you don't like the way it's going you can change them and then you know say i wanted to go back to this one i change it zero cost to change there we go so there is a lot of flexibility in these so don't feel like you've made the wrong decision so there it is family just a quick breakdown of your starter pack for artifacts we open up some chests and this is how I look at artifacts. This is how I break down artifacts. And again, don't be afraid to put it on somebody because moving them costs you nothing. It, it doesn't affect the game. You, you can plug and play these on characters. So just keep that in mind. But that's how you look at it. You look at what the stat brings, what move kits encompass, and then what the benefits are. And don't be misled by Okay, it says Venomate, I need to put it on Venomate. You don't have to at all, because it can be beneficial to other characters as well. So that's what I got for everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And if you're just finding me for the first time, click that subscribe button, turn on notifications, all that good stuff that goes along with it. I hope everybody has a great Tuesday. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.